So in late 2013, there was an abrupt standard of care change in the treatment of hepatitis C. And that was with the approval of a brand new medical agent, a first-in-class medicine called sofosbuvir. What was approved in December of 2013 by the Food and Drug Administration was a combination of pegylated interferon alpha, ribavirin, and sofosbuvir. This was for patients with the most common kind of hepatitis C in this country, hepatitis C genotype 1. This new pill is actually very powerful and allows the regimen to be decreased in length. Previously, our treatment was 24 to 48 weeks with toxic medications. The length of therapy now with sofosbuvir shrunk to 12 weeks. And furthermore, the cure rates the sustained virus response rates went from about 75% previously to 90%. So this was a dramatic standard of care change. Not only that, but for, for patients with the less common kinds of hepatitis C, genotypes 2 or 3, which we also see in the United States, the first interferon-free regimens were approved. So fosfavir and ribavirin, no interferon. These regimens are very well tolerated and also led to very high cure rates. So this again was a revolutionary advance in the treatment of hepatitis C. And as revolutionary as this advance has been, this is actually just the harbinger of things to come. In the coming year, we expect approvals of additional regimens for hepatitis C. There are other products that will be approved with sofosbuvir that give us approved interferon-free regimens for hepatitis C genotype 1. In addition, there are other companies and other products that will be approved separate from sofosbuvir, which will also allow the use of interferon-free medical regimens for hepatitis C genotype 1. In phase 2 and phase 3 trials, these other regimens are extremely well tolerated and they have sustained response rates in excess of 95%. So we're at the cusp of a great advance in the therapy of hepatitis C, which has been a, a major cause of morbidity and mortality in the United States and all over the world over the last 20 years or so. So it's a very exciting time to be involved with therapy of hepatitis C because we are going to be able to cure many, many patients that previously were incurable. And if we can provide the medications to the patients, and why I say that is the medications are very costly, but if we can provide the medications to the patients, the expectation is that the morbidity and mortality from this deadly disease, that they're going to drop dramatically in the coming years. The new medical regimens for hepatitis C are going to present uh, a very big impact, I think, on the managed care industry. Why that is, is these medications are expensive. They're highly effective, extremely well tolerated. And in fact, they're so well tolerated that many, many patients that previously were untreated because we didn't think they could tolerate the medications, now we'll be able to get the medications if we choose to prescribe them. Now that's great for patients and for the healthcare industry because we're going to be eliminating patients with this deadly disease. But from a managed care perspective, it's going to be very expensive. And even though these regimens are decreasing in length of therapy and they're decreasing in how complicated they are, meaning we're just giving pills now instead of giving injections that have a lot of side effects, still the cost is rising. Uh, having been in this industry for a long time, when things get better and shorter, they unfortunately also get more expensive. Uh, so if you start prescribing these medications to the many, many thousands of patients that either were previously treated unsuccessfully or people that have been deferring therapy because they have contraindications to the medications, or for the many patients that haven't been identified yet that become identified in the near future, it's going to present a great strain, a great burden for, to, uh, to the managed care industry. 
Uh, how will that be dealt with? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Um, there may be negotiations with managed care, uh, with the managed care industry and health providers that have constraints uh, by managed care in terms of decreasing the cost of these medications. The managed care industry may put restrictions on who we actually treat. In some countries, including Canada, many provinces don't allow you to treat hepatitis C unless you have at least moderate scar tissue damage. They allow you to treat, but they don't pay. The government doesn't pay for the medications if you don't at least have moderate damage to your liver. So if you have lesser damage from hepatitis C, uh, they, don't, they won't pay for it. Now, if the patient can pay for it, then, then it's okay. So we may have these types of restrictions placed on us to, in a way, ration uh, these medications to the patients that need it the most. The expectation is that the new medications for hepatitis C will cost many, many billions of dollars a year to the point where hepatitis C pharmacotherapy will likely become the number one disease indication pharmacotherapy as far as cost goes in the United States. So this will be such a, a new problem for managed care that managed care and health care providers together will have to come up with strategies to deal with this and to make the medications available to as many patients as possible.